Emmanuel Macron just dodged the bullet. Macron increased the pension age from 62 to 64 without gaining enough support from the National Assembly, France's lower house consisting of 577 members. He did so by using Article 49 of the French Constitution. One of its provisions, subsection 3, allows the government to bypass the legislative branch at the risk of facing a vote of no confidence. A successful vote of no confidence would then mean the resignation of the prime minister and her cabinet. Emmanuel Macron has always been a pragmatist as well as revolutionist. Born in 1977, Macron graduated from the ENA, the country's top school for business people and bureaucrats. After spending some time as the inspector of finances at the Ministry of Economics and Finance, he started working at Rothschild, a famous investment bank. This was the moment he became an economic libertarian. This, however, did not mean he decided to be like Marine Le Pen. In 2017, he launched his own centrist political party called the Republic on the Move. His arguments included preserving the European Union, fostering economic reforms, and educating children. People of France managed to be rational. He defeated Marine Le Pen and became the youngest president in French history. One year before his victory, David Cameron, who was the British Prime Minister back then, had to let Britain to exit from the European Union. Macron turned the tide of populism. Nevertheless, his presidency has been full of controversies and violent riots. Starting from November 2018, the Yellow Vest movement resisted against Macron's decision to increase the fuel tax. The fuel price in France was already increasing in 2018. The French government's decision to raise the fuel price even further did exacerbate the financial difficulties faced by many hardworking French citizens. In the end, Macron had to cancel the fuel tax increase and raise the minimum wage. The problem with the pension system of France is, however, a far more fundamental one. Most of all, people are living longer these days. This means the government must spend more money on financing their life after retirement. To do so, the government must collect more money from current workers. The problem is that because of an ever-decreasing fertility rate in France, there are not as many workers as before in the French economy. France's pension system will soon face deficits. Macron is not the kind of person who lets people to stay unproductive for several decades. In December 2019, he first suggested the merger of the existing 42 pension schemes into a single system to reduce administrative costs. Although this was a sound plan, many French citizens accepted it as a preliminary attempt to reduce the size of the pension. Numerous strikes followed. Macron had to retreat as, given its nature, his party is exposed to the attacks by both extremes of the French political spectrum. This time, however, is different. Macron seriously wants to change the course of the country's pension system. During his televised interview on March 22, 2023, Macron said, when I started working, there were 10 million retirees. Today, there are 17 million, and by 2030, there will be 20 million. He desperately tried to persuade French citizens by continuously emphasizing the necessity of reform. He made it clear that he does not enjoy the pain of French people. There is simply no way for France to afford current pension system. Such a welfare program must be designed after taking the future generation into account. People are giving up a sizable portion of their immediate income to systematically prepare for their lives after retirement. It is irrational, as well as immoral, to let all people be cheated by the government. In addition to this, the French government has faced the budget deficit every year since the late 1970s. France is, in fact, spending a lot of money. On the other hand, many people argue that Emmanuel Macron is not sincere about listening to opposite voices. Those who achieved great success at an early age tend to be overly ambitious, confident, and forceful. This means that there must be a constant gap between their ideals and the reality they must face. In his book, The Rise and Fall of the Great Powers, Paul Kennedy stresses that the overextension of many powerful nations led to their downfall. Individuals can also be entrapped by hubris. Those politicians who let the latest votes of no confidence against Macron are justifying their stance by arguing that Macron does not care about legitimate democratic procedures as he is just too narcissistic. Most people don't care much about the future of their country as they already have too much work to do in their daily lives. This does not mean that they are unable to sense the coming crisis. Still, multiple polls suggest that two-thirds of French citizens are against the pension reform. 
What's more, 78% of the population responded that Macron's use of such an extraordinary measure to pass a still controversial bill was wrong. His approval rating went down from 41% to 28%. This shows that his method is undermining his goal. It seems that Emmanuel Kant's deontology is relevant even in the discussion for fiscal soundness. After all, in 1793, French citizens beheaded their own monarch who tried to restore the financial stability of the French government. Macron has already announced that he will not call for a new election because of this turmoil. Such a decision was easy to predict, for he and his party will be crushed during the election if there is no change in public opinion. He can, of course, simply decide to wait until everyone forgets about what happens. One problem is that the reform is not final. The constitutional courts still must approve the bill. Another concern is that his legacy as the founder of a rare, successful centrist party will be damaged. He must open a social dialogue to give the opposition the opportunity to put some productive input into the reform. He should also promise that it will result in some solid changes that serve both the country and its citizens better. His political venture tackles the right problem. It, however, lacks modesty. In February, his finance minister said that the initial plan was to raise the retirement age to 65 instead of 64. Macron and his team should spend more time soothing their citizens.